In the previous video, I showed you how to create a DGN file with ditch modification control, horizontal and vertical alignments that can be used by the roadway designers to modify their corridor model so that the corridor model reflects those ditch modifications. In this video, I'll show you actually how to make those corridor model modifications. The first step is to attach that previously created ditch control file. Now just been attached. At this point, it's often necessary to close and reopen the file so that Open Roads recognizes the newly attached geometry. It's just one of those glitchy things. And if I go to the area where the ditch modifications were made, you can see that in fact, you see this red point, it's now showing the ditch control that was created in that previous video and is now attached. Go ahead and create a temporary horizontal dimension line so we can see the, the effect of the changes that we're gonna make. So the first step is we're gonna use the horizontal alignment to create a profile model. horizontal alignment for the, for the ditch modifications that we just attached. So there's the vertical alignment we created in the previous video. I'm going to use analyze, the analyze point to obtain the, the baseline, the roadway baseline stations for the beginning and ending of the ditch modification vertical alignment. I need to select the roadway baseline. Now that's the now roadway baseline is now the reference, and now I can go in here and snap on these points. And the first station is 57 plus 25, and it ends at 61 plus 59.67. So I'll take a note of that, and we'll use that when we create our point controls. Now before we create the point controls, we want to take a look at the roadway corridor template so that we can understand exactly what's going on. So the roadway corridor is using a template that actually has a flat bottom ditch in it. Parametric constraints were previously applied to this corridor to make this ditch a V ditch. So there's actually two different points that are now located in the same place. We want to apply our point control to this one not to this one. So the one that we want is the EC ditch inside R, not the one that's outside. So now that we know that, let's go ahead and do our point controls. Let's select the corridor handle, go to point control. You see I've set up the start and stop stations. This one's off a little bit. And I've given it a meaningful name. I'm going to go ahead and accept those initial prompts. And then I'm going to locate that point from my, I could go ahead and look at the available list, but it's quite extensive. There's a lot of points in that template. I could just go ahead and select it from the cross section, but I need to make sure I'm getting the right one. You can see the first one is not correct. So I'm going to reset, go to the correct one one more time. That's the one I want, EC ditch inside right. So go ahead, it goes ahead and it populates that point. I'm gonna use the vertical mode because at this point what I want it to do, I want the ditch to extend the six to one slope and keep going until the ditch invert reaches the target elevation. So I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna use vertical mode and I'm gonna use as my control type, the linear, linear geometry and attached ditch control file. And it's going to ask me, well, which one in that file? So I'll, I'll scroll down, and that's the one we created before. I'll use that. And it finds out that it has an active profile, and that's the profile that will be used as the vertical control to extend that ditch at a six to one slope. 
Now I just need to accept all my inputs. Keep your eye on the ditch invert. You'll see that it will slide over to the right and down, maintaining a six to one slope. You can see that the horizontal distance has increased, but the slope is the same, still six to one. Over the roads has put a pink square around there to let you know that there's a point control that controls that point now. So we're done. However, what if instead of extending this at a six to one, I wanted to maintain the horizontal location of the ditch and just drop the invert down, change, steepen up the side slope, keep the ditch where it is, and just simply drop it down to my control point there. In this case, you turn off turn off the display of the attached geometry so I can see this graphic here. This is the graphic that ORD has created to represent the point control that's just been applied. And I can select that, go to properties, and see all the inputs that were provided to create that point control. And one of them was the vertical mode. I can change this to both. And that Instead of just controlling this vertically, I can say force this ditch to be exactly horizontally and vertically at the, at, the, um, at the point that was created using the horizontal and vertical alignment that we created previously for the ditch. So I'm gonna go ahead and say both, and you'll see that control point move over. So those are a couple of different options that you have for point control. So now the quarter model has been updated and this, these ditch modifications will now be reflected in the corridor model and uh, in the 3D model and any cross sections created from that area. The last step is to project our ditch profile into the roadway profile. So to do that, let's go to our geometry file. As always, I'm going to set my feature definition. I'm going to reference up the ditch control that we created previously. You see, I now have that in my file. So at this point, very simple. Here's the uh, the roadway profile near the high point. I'm going to go to project profile to element. I'm going to select my ditch profile, then select my roadway profile, and then you will see it appear here. And there it is. Now it's can be put on plans. It can be annotated. It's ready to go.